With the onset of mock exams looming, both teachers and year 11 pupils' heads will be spinning. Amongst other stresses that maths teachers will be dealing with at this time is the question of tier entry. Have I got it right? In an ideal world, maths tier entry decisions would be decided at the start of year 10 and no further movement between tiers would be required. And for the majority of pupils, this is what happens. However, we all know that it doesn't work like that for every single pupil. You can get the late bloomers, for which algebra and trigonometry have suddenly clicked and solving simultaneous equations and finding multiple missing angles now seem like a breeze. On the other hand, there are those pupils whose self-belief is slowly being eroded by not quite understanding the higher content. And the resulting lack of confidence in these pupils can sometimes be catastrophic on a higher paper, resulting in both an inability to even attempt the more complex questions and also in answering more accessible questions poorly. So as maths teachers, what can we do for these pupils? If you have already highlighted pupils that are standing out as being on the wrong tier for them, a movement to the correct tier is always better sooner rather than later. Then action can be taken to fill any gaps in learning as needed. However, if there is still some doubt about which tier pupils should be taking, then the mocks can give a good indication of this. If your school mock exams are in November, a sensible approach is to see how the pupil performs in their mocks on their current tier, and then make decisions post mock results. Indeed, once the mocks have been marked, they may highlight some pupils who weren't even on your radar as being entered on the incorrect tier. If a tier entry movement can happen before Christmas, this gives you a reasonable amount of time to successfully support a decision to switch those tiers. However, if your school mock exams are later in January or in March, a better approach would be to switch tiers for certain pupils prior to the mocks, so that the pupil's performance on the new tier can be assessed prior to the real thing. Of course, tier entry decisions should not be based on mock results alone, but from a multitude of information, including classwork, attitude to learning, low stakes assessments, the pupil's demeanor in class, and any conversations that you've had with the pupil. Here at Learn by Questions, we have produced a lovely resource that whilst not created for this purpose um, of supporting tier, tier entry decisions, it does do this really well. We have 10 question sets containing crossover questions. Those questions that appear on both the higher and foundation papers. The questions are all based on existing GCSE maths questions and are a great resource for pupils to hone, hone their exam skills. As with our mastery question sets, teacher feedback is provided for pupils on every question and teachers can gain the, all the usual insights from their data matrix. As a general rule, if pupils are comfortable answering the crossover questions and performing well, they are a good fit for the higher paper. If they are struggling with the crossover questions, they are better off being entered on the foundation paper. Once a decision to switch tiers has been made, an additional complication is communicating this decision to pupils and parents. It is often the case that the pupil will be on board with the decision. Indeed, you will hopefully already have had conversations about this with the pupil. Pupils will either appreciate the challenge of being given the opportunity to try the higher paper, or they will feel more comfortable and likely to succeed on the foundation paper. The stumbling block can often be telling parents. I would always make a phone call at this point rather than sending a letter or an email, as it's far more personal. It also gives the parents an opportunity to ask questions and raise any queries. Parents will always be interested into why uh, decisions to switch tiers has been made. Using mock results or recent assessment marks as part of this conversation will make it easier. It is much hard, harder to argue against facts and figures than it is opinions. That said, I have often talked to parents about tier entries from the point of view of the well-being of the child particularly when switching from higher to foundation. If I have seen in class that a pupil is getting so stressed about the complexity of the higher content, it almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that they won't do well at that level. This needs to be communicated to the parent as not only looking after the potential grade that a child will get, but also ensuring that their mental health is looked after. The most crucial part of switching tiers is not the decision itself, but the support that is put in place for the pupil once the decision has been made. There are two situations here and both need to be supported in different ways. Firstly, the rarer of the two situations is that a foundation pupil has shown the potential to conquer the higher content later on in the secondary school career. The biggest issue here is that they will have missed out on the teaching of a huge amount of higher content. This can result in a scramble to get missing content taught in time. 
Ideally in this situation, the school timetable will allow for the pupil to move into a group that is studying the higher content straight away. This in itself doesn't solve the issue of missing content though, and additional work will be needed um, to be set to cover this, but I'll come back to that in a moment. The other more common situation is where a pupil is struggling on the higher level and would benefit from a switch to the foundation team. You may find that when having a conversation with a pupil in this situation, that they are relieved to be moved onto the foundation paper. This is a time to be cautious though. The perception of the pupil can sometimes be that they can take the foot off the gas and relax a little bit, when in reality, it's all about relearning content that they probably haven't seen since year nine. A switch to foundation should not be considered an easy option by the pupil. As with a switch to higher paper, moving to a, the pupil to a maths group that is already covering foundation content is invaluable. Having switched tiers, this is where the hard work really starts. Whichever way the tier entry has been switched, there will be a lot of work to do. As a teacher, accommodating a new pupil in a, into a group who hasn't been studying at that level can be a challenge. Filling in gaps in knowledge has to be the main priority after a tier switch. For many pupils, this would take the form of a combination of independent study and one-to-one -one time with the teacher, as the class teacher still has to teach the rest of the group. In this instance, using the products such as Learning by Questions, where the teacher feedback is given after every question is invaluable. For those switching from higher to foundation, this may be enough. Recapping previously learned content with feedback given after each question reinforces what they thought they knew and improves confidence. For those switching to higher tier, teaching new harder content can be more of a challenge, but using Learning by Questions topic tests can highlight gaps in knowledge and help reveal where one-to-one -one teacher input is needed most. Add to, this, add to this the fact that the teacher can see any gaps in knowledge via LBQ's data matrix means that any interventions by the class teacher are purposeful, directed and towards those gaps and relevant to the individual pupil. Making decisions to tier, change tiers should not be taken lightly, especially as you get nearer to the end uh, date of the final exam. Indeed, the process of changing tiers can sometimes cause an element of panic as you are letting go of something that you and the pupil were working towards. But changing tiers isn't about any perceived sense of failure, it's about ensuring success. Adapting to a tier change can be tricky, but when done in a collaborative way, where teachers, parents and pupils have a common goal, it can prove to be the best decision all around.